The new Bayloth Baratil Entertainer is a legend I've had my eye on since he was revealed. Inside the 99 of the new Battle for Baldur's Gate precons, this is a choose a background commander with a lot of potential. He's a 5 mana elf shaman on a 2 5 body. He reads Creatures your opponents control with power less than Bayloth Baratil's power are goaded, meaning they must attack if able and must attack someone other than you. Also, whenever a goaded attacking or blocking creature dies, you create a treasure token. Of course, as mentioned, you also get to choose a background, meaning you can pair this red commander with any other color. The potential of passively goading everything is one I couldn't pass up. I posited that it's far easier than active goading effects found on Kit Kanto, Mayhem Diva, or Cross Defense Contractor, so I wanted to see how possible it was to just ensure nothing is able to attack you once your commander is out. And the possibility to pair him with any color, thanks to choose a background, means possibilities are endless. Honestly, I couldn't decide which one background to pair him with, so I didn't. That's right, I've created another modular deck, meaning there's a core of ever-present cards and a rotating package dependent on the background you choose from game to game. Meaning you can have an entirely different play experience each time you play this deck, keeping the deck fresh and exciting. In particular, I chose three backgrounds I was particularly interested in. First is the black background Criminal Past. This legendary enchantment grants commander creatures you control menace and a nice power boost for each creature card in your graveyard. It was tough to decide between Criminal Past and Cultist of the Absolute, but Criminal Past giving us the opportunity to have a massive power boost rather than a fixed boost is exactly where I wanted to be. This background clearly wants us to have some sacrifice or self mill effects to fill our yard, along with some reanimation effects for additional value. The second background I built around is the white background Noble Heritage. This 2 mana legendary enchantment grants commander creatures you own when this creature enters the battlefield or at the beginning of your upkeep, each player may put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on a creature they control. For each opponent who does, you gain protection from that player until your next turn. Gaining protection from a player is very strong, meaning you can't be targeted or damaged by them. But the real benefit here is the plus one plus one counters that we can put on Bayloth, ensuring we goad everything at an ever increasing amount of creatures on the battlefield. Naturally, we lean into some political elements with this build, but also some strong plus one plus one counter synergies. And the third background included in this modular deck is the green background Raised by Giants. The most passive of these three backgrounds, Raised by Giants simply gives commander creatures you control base power and toughness 10-10. This one was a slam dunk. It makes Bayloth chonky, meaning nothing with power 9 or less can attack you without you having to do anything. This one's quick and easy. Ramp up and let your opponents finish each other off. Before we get into the modular packages, let's take a look at what I included in the core mono red package. Since our commander will never change, I ensured we've got some pretty basic ground covered here. Additionally, since we're only swapping in one package at a time, I split the deck 50-50. 49 cards plus Bayloth in our core package, and 49 cards plus the background in each of the modules. Nice and easy. Now, the core package leans into being able to cast our commander first and foremost. At 5 mana, it's not easy or fast to get Bayloth into play to start goading creatures, especially in mono red. So I've leaned into some faster mana acceleration. Jeweled Lotus, Dockside Extortionist, and Jessica's Will. These can help us skip several turns ahead in our curve if we'd like, or at least make recasting Bayloth easy if he's been removed once or twice. These aren't the least expensive pieces in the world, but that's the price you pay, <laughs> with a higher mana value commander. Now since our commander makes treasures, we want to include some core support for that too. We want to be making more tokens with a Zorn, Professional Facebreaker, or Academy Manufacturer to amp up our value train and ensure we're mana rich. Or by including Reign of Riches to ensure we're getting free spells off of Cascade when we use treasures. If Bayloth isn't able to stick around for too long, we need to beat our opponents with value, and this is how. Speaking of a beating for our opponents, since we're going to be passively goading the majority of opponents' creatures, let's make it easier to beat down. Frontier Warmonger, Frenzy Saddle Brute, and the new Death Kiss all ensure that even a small creature attacking in at an opponent connects, and connects hard. 
Lastly, I wanted to include some goading redundancy in case Bayloth can't remain in play. So Komino Bottle Armor, Disrupt Decorum, and the criminally underplayed Geo Rager all earn spots in the core deck. Now, before we take a look at what's in each of the three packages, you can take a look at the full deck list in the description below by following the link to my sponsor, Moxfield. Moxfield is the best deck building platform in the world, and thanks to their custom tagging feature, I'm able to build easy to parse modular decks like this one. Dividing out the core packages from the modules is simple and even lets me choose custom display for anyone viewing my decks. I love them, and you will too. Go follow my Moxfield profile now. Let's take a look at our green package led by Raised by Giants. With a 5 mana commander and a 6 mana background, it's pretty easy to lean into ramp as a core synergy here and let the benefits passively roll in. With mana dorks like Birds of Paradise, cost reducers like Goblin and Narcomancer, and ramp spells like Cultivate, we can very quickly get ahead of the curve and get ahead of the table. Once we have our commander in play along with our background, we can take advantage of this by bullying smaller creatures with fight spells. Ram through is a big beating here, dealing excess fight damage to a creature's controller. Mage Slayer also means we can be doing guaranteed damage as often as possible and twice as much if it goes unblocked. And other equipment like Blackblade Reforged makes use of our land ramp to make our equipped creatures even bigger. Imagine a Bayloth raised by giants wielding the Blackblade. Nothing will ever be able to attack us. Other creatures in the deck help us increase power too. Forgotten Ancient, Halana and Elena Partners, and Nyeth of the Dire Hunt all help us to make more than just Bayloth bulky. Next up is our white background, Noble Heritage. We lean heavily on this background's ability to grant plus one plus one counters here, and lean even further into those synergies. Cards like Lion Sash, the new Lazelle, and Citadel Siege all ensure that, background or not, we can get a handful of counters onto our commander pretty easily. What's not easy is mana. In red and white, we rely heavily on catch-up mechanics, treasures, and artifact ramp, so including the new Deep Gnome Terramancer is an easy call. So is Loyal Warhound and the new Sword of Hearth and Home, all letting us even the playing field just a bit when it comes to getting our 5-mana commander into play and staying in play. We also get access to some of the best removal possible in this color combo. Rip Apart, Wear Tear, and Player Removal via Boros Charm are all must-haves. Lastly, going on the attack is going to be important to finishing opponents off, so Gisela Blade of Gold Knight ensures we only need to do half the work to get twice the damage while being defensive if we're in a head-to-head -head scenario. Akroma's Will is the best way to force through damage, and keep in mind that our background satisfies the if you control a commander clause here, so we'll almost always be getting both modes, Bayloth in play or not. And let's not forget Duelist Heritage, an excellent way to play with other people's combat steps and make it even more dangerous as their goaded creatures swing at each other. Or your creatures swinging at them. And our last package is our Black Background, Criminal Past. This one grants Bayloth Evasion via Menace and a sizable power boost for each creature in our yard. Only 3-4 to four creatures in the graveyard is enough of a boost that most opponent's creatures will remain goaded. So here I've included some classic self-mill like Perpetual Timepiece, Stitcher's Supplier, and the Dredger Stinkweed Imp. These serve to help get cards into the yard repeatedly at little to no cost to us. So does the new Cemetery Tampering, or wheels like Wheel of Misfortune, or graveyard tutors like Auric Lore Mage. These can help us significantly in our goal to put some skeletons in Bayloth's closet. There are a few ways to get creatures back out of the yard too. Stitcher Supplier, Oversold Cemetery, and Felden of the Third Path all help us use that valuable graveyard resource. Now of course, I couldn't build a deck about putting creatures in the graveyard without my favorite boys, Fleshbag Marauder, Merciless Executioner, and Plague Crafter. Working to sacrifice themselves and take out opponents' creatures, it's everything we want. They also combo very well with the new Mahadi Emporium Master. This can net us a boatload of treasures too. Just sacrificing our own creatures or running them into combat helps because, well, I guess Mahadi buys the loot off their bodies? Premium removal is also key here too. In red-black we get Terminate and Bedevil and board wipes like Toxic Deluge, which can often leave our beefy commander unharmed. 
perfect if we're seen to control the board a bit further and ensure our own creatures make it to the grave. And let's not forget the benefits of putting creatures we want in the yard in there. Anger, for instance, ensures that we can give all of our creatures haste all the time for no opportunity or mana cost. And having a Cardur Doom Scourge in the graveyard, which we can easily reanimate over and over, means even if Baylock doesn't stick to the battlefield, we'll have our almost goad shields up. All told, this is three different takes on one deck and one commander. They all want us to do roughly the same thing, but all take very different vectors to get there. I know a lot of you really enjoyed my last modular deck linked up top, so leave me some feedback on this build and let me know how you would build Bailoff in the comments below. Hit that like button, be sure to subscribe, and as always, good luck and have fun.